Welcome back, everybody. Well, it's been a little while since we've done one of these, but it's time to take a look at another epic rap battle of history. And the vote that we put up on Patreon a couple of weeks ago uh, came back in favor of Gandhi versus Martin Luther King Jr. So obviously you can see the similarities. Both were pacifists who were fighting for, um, fighting against, I should say, uh, injustice, uh, particularly racial injustice, uh, social inequality, things of that nature. Uh, so I'll be interested to dive into this one. Be honest, I will probably miss some references. I won't catch every little thing. I know a lot more about Martin Luther King Jr. than I do about Gandhi. Obviously, growing up in the U.S., we learn about Dr. King, uh, especially in January around Martin Luther King Jr. Day. Uh, so we'll dive into this one. We'll talk a little bit about it. I will. Um, most of you seem to prefer when I pause uh at the time of references rather than waiting until a whole line goes. I'll put the link in the description to the original video. So if you want to watch it without my interruptions, it's there for you. Don't forget to give them a like and a subscribe. Uh, and don't forget to do the same for this channel. Let's dive in. All right, so uh, talking about both of them being pacifists right off the bat, the caste system in India, I'm not perfectly educated on that, but I have the basic understanding that it's basically a system of social classes that people pretty much are, in most cases, stuck within the particular level you're in. So, you know, if your family's farmers, you're probably only ever going to be a farmer or similar things. So it's kind of that. Um, things like the caste system have existed, even if it wasn't called that, even if it wasn't necessarily official, throughout history, throughout many different cultures. Slum dogs billionaire, first name Messiah, rap so hot, I spit yoga fu So, <laughs> uh, slum dog millionaire is obviously a reference, or well, it's, um, a reference to Slumdog Millionaire. Uh, I forget what he actually said there. Slumdog Skillionaire in, instead of Slumdog Millionaire. First name Messiah. Um, his he, he received the name Mahatma, which I believe is uh, an Indian word that basically means like an enlightened one or something similar to Messiah, which is Messiah is a Greek word. Uh, that has to that was applied to Jesus or, or can be applied to other people too uh, as kind of a savior or someone who's anointed in some way. Uh, so that's what that's referenced to. First name Messiah, rap so hot, I spit yoga fire. Everything you preach, I said it first. You should jot down these words, plagiarize my whole word. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I mean, Gandhi comes before Martin Luther King Jr., and there's been accusations over time that a lot of Dr. King's speeches were plagiarized from other people. I don't see what the big deal is. Chances are somebody has said something before you have in most cases. So I think it's probably blown out of proportion, but that's what that reference is to. Leave your thoughts on the door like the real Martin Luther. I'm not thinking you shall overcome this, Julia. I'm so Martin Luther, of course, is the guy who starts the, uh, the Protestant Reformation uh, back in the 1500s. He famously supposedly nailed the, his 95 theses to the door of the Wittenberg Church, which was um, uh, basically the 95 things that he felt needed to be addressed in the Catholic Church. He wasn't initially trying to break away. He was trying to reform the church. Um, and uh, he also makes reference to you shall not overcome this. We shall overcome with it was an old spiritual that was often sung at a lot of the events that Martin Luther King Jr. was associated with. I'm the king of civil rights from the city to suburbia. No shoes, no shirt, but I'm still going to serve it. So uh, I don't know if this is true in other countries, but here in the United States, a lot of times you, you go to a business and it'll say no shirt, no shoes, no service. In other words, make sure you're wearing shoes and, and shirts before you come in. And obviously, um, one of the things that Dr. King was dealing with uh, to a strong degree was the discrimination in the South when it came to uh, people being able to be served alongside of whites. Uh, back in the 1890s here in the U.S., there was a, a United States Supreme Court case called Plessy versus Ferguson. And basically the result of that case was that separate but equal became the law of the land, particularly in the South. And, and the idea was as long as you are providing services, you don't have to provide them together. So you can have separate bathrooms. You know, you can allow 
African Americans to sit on your bus, even if they have to sit in a different section. You can have uh, you know African Americans sit in one part of your restaurant while the whites sit in another section. They basically said that is legal as long as you're providing the same service to both, even though it might not be together. So that was what made segregation legal, and it was only overturned in the 1950s by another case called Brown versus the Topeka Board of Education. Uh, so that's a lot of what's being at play there. Make you swallow your words so you can break the fast, and thank God Almighty you can eat at last. <laughs> that was pretty good. So Dr. King gave a speech uh, where he talked about uh, thank God Almighty, uh, free at last, free at last, thank God Almighty, we are free at last. And, um, he's saying you can eat at last because uh, Gandhi would go on these hunger strikes as part of his protest. I admire the way you broke the British power, but I have a dream that one day you'll take a shower. <laughs> Again, a reference to Dr. King's I Have a Dream speech that he famously gave in Washington, D.C., the Lincoln Memorial. Um, I think most Americans have grown up knowing about that speech. It was one of the most memorable, iconic speeches of all time in the history of our country. Uh, very inspiring speech. Uh, and obviously, Gandhi, with these hunger strikes, would rarely leave where he was doing the hunger strike. So he wasn't really bathing. Hygiene was obviously a factor there. I like the H in your name. You ought to remain silent. Flatten your style like bread. non -violent. You would know about bread, milk, a burning ham sandwich. Boy, got those grits. Sit in with some spinach. With protestant women, the same advice goes. Always stay away from the hole. Oh, okay. So that's kind of a double meaning there stay away from the hose you know a lot of times the police what they would do is they would use fire hoses against uh people who were protesting against segregation uh, but it also is a reference to one of the darker parts of dr king's life which was, was he very notoriously uh, had regular affairs with a lot of women um and this was something the fbi was aware of because the fbi was kind of secretly keeping tabs on him and um, it doesn't, here's the thing, like all people throughout history, there are imperfections and Dr. King absolutely had his flaws. He was not this perfect person. Now there was Gandhi for that matter. None of us are, uh, but that is one of the kind of the darker sides to Dr. King's life. I've got so much street cred, they write my name on the signs. So they write my name on the signs. Pretty much every major city in America has a Martin Luther King Jr. street. Um, you can find them all over the place. Uh, he's definitely, you know, had a lot of things named after him. I'd bring you for tech support, but I got a Nobel Prize. <laughs> so he has a Nobel Peace Prize, uh, which is a reference there, but he also kind of a racial uh, accusation there. Um, you know, here in the United States, I don't know if it's true in other countries or not, but um, there, you know, a lot of times you call tech support and you get somebody in India. So you'll get somebody with an Indian accent, and I think that's kind of what he's referring to there. I'd ring you for tech support. Nigga, we got more beef than one of your sacred cows, but I'm about to forgive you so hard right now. I am possibly resisting the fact that you suck. I am celibate because I don't give a fuck. Oh, man. Who's <laughs> that? So the last stuff's pretty self-explanatory there. Um, wow, that one was pretty good. Oh, I got to decide who wins. Um, I feel like Dr. King's disses were better. Um, no, you know what? Now that I think about it again, I think Gandhi's were better. I'm going to go with Gandhi on this one. I, I'll probably get a lot of flack. You can disagree with me and tell me why. Uh, but use the comment section below. Let me know your thoughts. Would love to hear them. Please hit the like button. Make sure you go and check out the original content and watch it uninterrupted. Thanks for watching. We'll see you again soon.